morning, everybody. Welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast, where I talk about knitting, spinning, and sometimes sewing, and all the beautiful things you can make with yarn. My name is Doc, and I am coming to you from beautiful Albuquerque in the desert of New Mexico, where it's very hot today and kind of all the time at this time of the year but I decided it's not too too late in the day yet so I wanted to give it a try to record outside mm, we'll see how this goes and I hope the lighting works out for you but I'm gonna give it a go so yes I, if you recall, if you've watched, watched the last episode, I have been um, spending some time in Germany with my family, including a trip to uh, Venice and a little bit of traveling in the closer proximity to where my mom lives in the Frankfurt area. And I, yeah, I think I, I, I well, not I think. I did come back a few days ago and slowly but steadily I feel like I'm getting over the jet lag. However, I'm still waking up at six o'clock in the morning, which is not very good, but whatever. On the bright side, that's the time of the day where it is cooler here and where I can be outside, which is so nice because I've as much as I like Germany, I always miss the desert and I miss the blue skies here. And yeah, it's just, you know how it is. It's just good to be home after four and a half weeks. So, uh, where do I start? I have been knitting quite a bit while I was gone, of course, as you do when you travel. And I have to show you a few things that got done while I was in Germany. And as you may guess, some of them are socks. In May, after I got back from Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, I started some shorty socks with some yarn that was gifted to me by Jenny of Marigold Jen Yarns and um, I just had to cast some socks on. It was like a halfy skein and I decided to combine it with a, a, with a mini skein for the cuff and really make the socks um, make the leg like really short and they turned out super cute I think I always knit my socks on DPNs and with 64 stitches 2.5 millimeter needles and I'll work a heel flap and a gusset that's what fits my foot best, I find. And that's a rounded toe where I work a decrease and then I knit one round for five times. And then I decrease every round until I'm down to 12 stitches. Then I decrease, uh, I work a double decrease on those stitches, which brings me down to four stitches and I pull the yarn through. Very cute socks. Where's the other one? Oh, right here. Well, what do you see? And it's not woven in. <laughs> this is the episode of ends and new projects and new yarns but more about that later so here are my two socks and there is another pair of socks which is the pair that i made from the sock blank that i i showed you a little bit about that a little while ago 
And now the socks are done. They are very different because in the end I decided to make it was a double knit sock blank and I thought well then I'm gonna have identical, uh, identical socks but I decided to reverse the second for the second sock so I started where the first sock ended actually not even where the first sock ended but where the sock blank ended I, I unwound it completely I split the two yarns and then I knitted the I made the second sock. I don't even remember which one was number one and what was number two. Hmm. I am thinking this one was the first sock because this is not quite as kinky. That must be where I cast on. And then this is number two. A lot of red and a lot of turquoise. And it was a dye technique that I used, which I stole from uh, rug hooking, how you dye fabrics for rug hooking, where you kind of lay the fabric out in a pan and you scrunch it together and pour the dyes on. It was kind of a very, very fun experiment. And I love how, how the yarn turned out with these lighter spots where the dye did not quite penetrate and it gives you this mottled speckly effect. Another pair done and here is some of what I have left which will go into the sock memory blanket. I have another little one and the crochet blanket that I have going. Someone asked me to show my blankets and I will gladly do that. It's just that today I have so much else to show you. So I'd rather do it another time when there is not so much on my table. You should see this in front of me. It's a whole mess. I hope I'm going to be able to sort things out here for you. So these are the two socks and both on both no ends woven in, but I do have something where I did weave in the ends. Sorry about shaking the camera. I am so excited about this. I love this so much. So the story was that I had to dye yarn just two days before I left for Germany. And uh, the, the plan was to use it for a Lemmy K shawl. Another one, because I made a Lemmy K by Isabel Kramer for my mom from a oh, what company was it i think it was madeline tosh mainly and whatever shaking the camera right now is not me but mike who is going for a walk right there on the table he's probably going to make an appearance say hi ike <laughs> there he is Ooh, ike Okay. <laughs> but back to my project. Finished object. I um, dyed the yarn for the Lemmy K and um, that was uh, a base of mine which is a DK weight a non super wash which I really badly wanted to try and this time I made the shawl which is a triangular shape I made it in a solid color and I love it so much I just adore this stitch pattern it was it's not an easy one in terms of being memorizable so I had to refer to the chart a lot but it's worth it and it really pops so much more in a solid color since we're back in the States, I blocked it. 
even though it was it looked fine it's just bringing out the triangular shape a bit better I have made it bigger the uh, stockinette section before I started the the pattern section and if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about how I did that I talk about it in the last episode so you can easily um, look that up and find that there I used three skeins three 100 gram skeins of the yarn that's all very happy with it I think it's a good color for me so I was also working on something that I had not picked up that I had not brought to Germany and the the thing was that initially I wanted to finish that project before I went to Germany I thought then I have a shawl but um, I I changed my mind because it was so hot at the time when we left for Germany and actually in fact it stayed hot while we were there it was just uh, I want to say maybe there was one weekend where the weather was not that hot and otherwise it was really absolutely I mean almost like here almost as hot as here so that the decision was good but now I really badly want to go back to uh, finishing this shawl and the one I'm talking about is my on the spice market by Melanie Berg and if you don't know the pattern you've I don't know where you've been because this is a very popular pattern and a lot of people have made it on Ravelry and it's been out for quite some time and what I did is I ended up custom dyeing the yarn again uh, Zia Wools from my yarn company a base that I like so so much it's called sugar loaf and it's a light fingering weight and this is where I am right now you start knitting here and I am at the end I can't tell you how much is missing but I'm thinking just maybe six rows or something like that before I can cast it off I am looking forward to having this off the needles as well and then there's going to be more ends to weave in again <laughs> Can you tell I'm not in the mood? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So, I showed you the socks that I finished. The shawl, something that I want to work on, but I spaced out. I wanted to show you one more thing that I finished. And it is really something that I... I know some of you don't care for novelty yarns and I am or the commercial ones but I, I I knit with everything so when I am in Germany I usually shop at the yarn store there which is which carries only Lana Grossa um, they produce in Italian so they have a huge line of yarns and the lady who owns the yarn shop is extremely knowledgeable so she can very she's just a nice person to talk to and you know gives you nice color combi combo recommendations and she knows me she's known me for a long time so she picks good color I found I'm uncertain she helps me pick the right color for uh, 
for my project because she, you know, kind of like depending on the sting, skin tone and whatnot. So what I have made is kind of like my standard top-down cardigan. I thought, well, why not make another cardigan, which is half sleeve, which is something that I throw on when I go to the grocery store, when it's where it's too cold to go like this, but you don't want a full-blown jacket. And so I have these, I, I have many of those in all kinds of colors half sleeve and kind of that you usually wear open open or it just has one button up here and um i started this last thursday and i finished it yesterday <laughs> and yesterday was less than a week definitely five days max but it may not count because I haven't woven in the ends go figure so here we go that is my cardigan actually I was making this for myself but then I thought I might gift it to a friend I will let you know. I'm going to make it. I'm going to decide. I'm probably going to give it to her because she does my accounting and she's a saint. She does not take any money for it and she's a knitter too and we I mean you all know us knitters, we are the ones who really appreciate hand knitted stuff the most so and if I need to get a feel for if she if she's gonna like the yarn so I know it's her color also but I will put it on for you so I literally had only a yard left over of one yarn at the sleeves and I held together two yarns and what I used was this fuzzy stuff and the other yarn is called Allegro it's a viscose cotton blend so the fuzzy is Estivo and if you are interested that's color 35 Estivo 2 and the other one would be color 31 and that is a variegated yarn which changes from a little bit glossier to matte and it has orange purple hint of brown and that same shade of pink picks up this color Oh, Ike wants to say hello again. <laughs> this cat, he's so funny. He just had to stroll by and mess, make the camera shake and whatnot. Okay, but I wanted to show you this. So initially the plan was to have a buttonhole and a one button closure, but then I decided against it and I crocheted a loop here, which will eventually, when I weave in the ends, be attached. And then there will be one button, which will more be like, I mean, I don't expect it'll be used much, but Okay, I will stand up. It is quite long, but also fairly close to the body, slim, but not shaped in any way, just knitted straight down. I have used, and here's the reason why I got this done so fast, I have made this with seven millimeter needles. And in fact, I think you could even go up one size. 
Uh, if you like it more airy, it would still work with this slightly denser fabric that I'm that I got with the seven millimeters. I will probably get a little bit more warmth altogether. It's a matter of preference. I'm not always into the loosey goosey stuff. Um, what else did I want to tell you? On the bottom, so I did this, I worked it top down, and on the bottom I did a one by one rib, and then I cast off with knit stitches only. I love how this pronounces the stitches that lay on top of the fabric. And I think I hmm I on the bottom I did four rows on the sleeves I only did three rounds because I was tight on the yarn and then for the front ed edges I also did a one by one rib also same needle size no change and then just made sure that I that my when I bound off it was not that struggled a little bit with that having it not too tight but also not wobbly but it worked out fine it lays flat I haven't done any blocking what I'm gonna do probably is I'm gonna lay it down flat and just put a wet towel over it for a day or so to make it to help it be more flat and roll less but the ribbing already does help i have used five balls of the estivo 2 the fuzzy yarn and six balls of the other one of the Allegro and oh I haven't told you yet the Estivo it's not even an all microfiber it's a it's a microfiber cotton blend 85% cotton and 15% microfiber which probably does the fuzz which is extremely soft I don't know stuff like this is so popular in Europe and it's not very well known in the USA I feel I don't know correct me if I'm wrong I like it so that's the cardigan hummingbird did you hear that oh I wish I could have turned the camera around but I was fiddling with it a little bit because of the light I didn't want to be in the Sun myself but I didn't want to be all dark while everything else is light but now I hope you can see it okay like this so vacation knitting what else of course as you can imagine now that I've finished up all really all the socks that I still had on the needles I allowed myself to cast on a new pair so what did I grab it was some yarn that I had which was a uh, as far as I remember it was it's definitely my base my Sandia base and I had uh, some a partial skein that I did a test dye on and I had I knew it wasn't going to be anything that I could um, could sell and it was a small amount and I decided I'm gonna make some shorty socks again because I like them and this is I split the yarn by weight right away and this is my second ball which I still have left that's a full 28 grams that was munchkin yelling at me I'm not sure why hi baby Cats are so loving, you know how it is when you've traveled and then you come home to your pets and they've missed you so much. Ours are never pouting, which is kind of nice. They just, they're like, why have you gone away? Come here, I want to cuddle with you. You've been gone too long. 
So I decided, I had already put it in a baggie after dying because maybe I, I don't know why that was the purple, I forgot. But I had combined it right away like this. And now I have turned the heel. This is just to mark where I start the heel. I started the heel. And I am just past the decreases for the gusset. And I really love the yarn. It's one of those where I <laughs> didn't take any notes. I wish I had. It's so pretty. It was definitely, it was not a full skein. So uh, that's probably why, because then it changes everything if you dye a full skein. So this project lives in this little baggie. which I made not too, too long ago. I love it so much. When I, I think this was one of the early ones where I started with um, experimenting with piecing stuff and putting in quilts, quilters, batting. So that's a new pair of socks. But then also, uh, you all know, I mean, uh, Isabel Kramer, she's really the, on the top of my list of designers. She's really one of my favorites. And I made the Lemmy K and I was, um, I, well, I was thinking, well, I had a problem with the project that I had brought to Germany and that I initially planned on doing. So, and I had mentioned, I had talked about this before. It's the Bobello cardigan that I wanted to make. So here's my issue that I had with it. I, again, I don't even know why. I had looked at this pattern so many times before I actually ended up buying it. And then I took it to Germany and I don't know, maybe I showed mom some pictures on Ravelry or something, but all of a sudden I saw that when you assemble, sorry about my face, it's <laughs> just funny. I'm not, I was not grossed out by the pattern or anything like that, but it was something that I saw in the pattern where I thought, I won't like it. And it's the way it's constructed. I mean, that's how it gets so oversized and funky, which I like very much, but it somehow the construction involves a seam which appeared to be right here. So kind of like more visible than a regular seam which would be on the bottom of the arm so I thought from the pictures I thought it would be more here I realized I would not like that I thought that that's going to be bothering me that would bother me if I made that yeah and I I had already done a whole bunch of swatching. I don't even know what I did. Oh no, they are here. So I, my gauge was way off. And so with the yarn that I wanted to use, which is my Ziawul's yarn in the, and the base is called Breeze. It has a content of uh, Tencel. And the colorway name is Where's Willy? Wow. So this is one of the samples and I could tell I'm off with the, I think I was supposed to use this needle size and it was I didn't like how loose it was. I experimented a little bit with the stitch also and just to play around just for 
fun. And then I had decided, and that was one of the reasons why I had died before I went to Germany, and that's where I had dyed a lace yarn to complement this colorway. So here is a ball of yarn. And I will show you that colorway in a second. The lace yarn. And here is where I'm holding it together with the lace yarn. Just playing around. In this case, I was, I, th I think maybe at this point, I hadn't even, dis I don't know if I had decided on abandoning the Bobello pattern at that point already, or if I, I think I had, and I was considering designing something with a different stitch pattern, so I played around. And, yeah. I, what I disliked about it is that this yarn, and that's why I actually called the base Breeze, the tencel adds drape, it adds a little bit of a, a cool spin to the merino base and I thought if I when I add I felt that when I added the merino I'm taking that away from this yarn when I hold it together because my fabric is getting stiffer it's gonna be extra warm because it has more merino and so I did not like that so much. But it was kind of okay to experiment. Oh, here's another Bobello. Swatchy. Probably try different needle sizes. I didn't even keep track of that in the end because, yeah, I just didn't like the fabric so much. I just thought I'd keep it and show you so, I mean, it's not that it was bad, but, well, whatever. So, then, what do you do? I needed a new project, and and that's why I started talking about Isabel Kramer. She came out with her Yumi. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but she designed a new uh, sweater, which has a, round, a yoke with a lace pattern, and... That is what I started. I just do not know what I did with the pattern. I don't have it here, I know, somewhere. My gauge is off, was off again. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it in a second. First, I gotta show you this, which is absolutely gorgeous. So what happened was that my row gauge was spot on, even though I went down a needle size, a 0.5 millimeter needles. But my stitch gauge was off, was I needed a lot more stitches to get gauge. So what I ended up doing and what I will do throughout the sweater, which won't be a problem further down, but I will. I cast on the stitches for the largest size that's, that I can make. But then when it comes to rows, I stick to the the M2 size and hopefully that will give me the sweater that I like. I know that when it gets to splitting the sleeves 
I will be at a point where I can try it on and then I can see if I was right or if I have to like add a few more stitches or the other way around so but let me see if I have the pattern here no I do not know what I did with it because I thought it was in my project bag which I probably showed you in Germany in the last episode die Koffiba I feel like I'm gonna be using this constantly for a while because I just love the fabric so much <laughs> that's so me so uh I am making this on 3.5 millimeter needles and I have my project page updated but I wanted to tell you that I also when I updated the project page I looked at everything yesterday and I thought I'd do some quick notes on how I made that um, red cardigan with a fuzzy yarn that I just showed you I have called it my summer ease cardigan and if you have ever knitted a top-down garment and you you will know what I'm talking about kind of like how it's done then you will be able to figure it out from my short notes how to make this and I gave information on the gauge and everything and like I said that's on my project page on Ravelry summer ease car cardigan so let me pause for a second because the cat needs me yes that's how we roll we obey the cat so did I recently talk about reducing the works in progress possibly but in the end what matters is having fun and enjoying what we work on and I kind of abandoned the plan as you may have guessed or will guess in a moment when I show you what I'm up to <sighs> because you know there's times to reduce the works in progress there's other times when you just need to cast on a few things right I know you'll agree so what I did after I got back is well I had this beautiful skein of merino lace weight which is a Zia Wool's yarn in and it's called Desert Willow. It's 100% merino. And I had dyed it up in a shade of a very pale grayish blue to go with the Where is Willy colorway that I showed you that I'm using for the Yumi. And so now this called for another project. Here it is. It's kind of funny. Have you ever realized that whenever you say this is not what you're into or you don't like this and that color or you would never do this and that, all of a sudden that's exactly what you end up doing? For me, it was recently, I may even have said that on the podcast, that I'm not too much into blues, that I prefer orange or pink or greens. And my yarn store actually they always said they they sell a lot of blues and I thought I don't understand that I always go for the greens but here I made the blue let K and now I was so drawn to this lace also I <laughs> I only started dyeing lace and adding it to the Zia wool spaces because my yarn store said wouldn't you have some lace yarn because we have a lot of lace knitters and we would like to have to carry your lace yarn I said okay but I don't know much about lace yarns because I have not ever and I will not ever knit lace yarn 
<laughs> yep, I started a lace yarn project just because I love this yarn so much. This color is just doing it for me, totally. Uh, so what I did the other day, so I'm kind of like in this mindset of where I want to catch up with this stuff. I want to get into my home groove. You know, you, you, you clean your email inbox and do all these things on the computer. Then I haven't been on Ravelry much while I was away. So now I enjoy my big screen and I get caught up with my friends activity feed and I see what's new, what patterns are new. And I'm looking at Hohi Locatelli's uh, patterns and I'm thinking, well, what could I do? Don't I, maybe I find a lace uh, pattern, lace yarn shawl. And then in Hohi's patterns, I find something which is not new at all. It's a few years old. And I fell in love with that pattern so hard. But it also makes me realize that I am really not always a project knitter. In this case, I am totally a product knitter. I really want this shawl so bad. And you will understand maybe when I show you this picture. This will be an airy cloud and I cannot wait to have this on my shoulders. And I have started, I had to start it yesterday and I feel like by the time I am done with this, I'm going to pull out my hair because it's going to be so much work. Oh my goodness. I worked for hours and hours on this yesterday, but I have so far, I have understood the pattern. So it was initially took me a moment to figure out, you know, what's the logistic of it? How is it done? And I have the bottom edge of this light as cloud thing. So yesterday I worked till about here. You start with a provisional cast and I'm not giving away too much. You're not ever going to figure out how this is done, honestly. Also, no, I'm not giving away too much. And then in the end, you pick up those stitches and I have, if in, so I needed to get to a certain stitch count for these stitches because I picked up stitches and my stitch count was too high so I just took note of how many I was over I did not redo the picking up the stitches but I just um, purled two together on the back row and this is where I was then what you do next is you set this aside I'm assuming it's going to be grafted in the end but I'm going to redo exactly the same thing and it's going to take me another week or so. No, I'm just kidding. I did it in a day. I ended up, well, I ended up going as far as this and like, I don't even want to think how long it took me three hours. And then this morning I ended up finishing that corner and picked up the, the stitches and now it's going to go and take a nap while I redo the same thing and I assume I'm going to be knitting the shawl before I graft the pieces together. So there is also of course extra stitches involved in to make this slightly ruffly edge which is going to be also 
going up on both sides. So <laughs> it's really something. I don't want to think about how long this is going to take me because that's going to make me want to throw it in the arroyo or start um, using maybe a knitting machine or something like that. No, you can't even do that because it's short rows and the, to get the ruffle on the side. So it's all classic hand knit <sighs> craziness. Yeah. But can you understand? beautiful and I named the project Glacier because we are going on a cruise on an Alaska cruise in a while and I would love nothing more than to have this for that cruise because a friend of mine she showed me I, I really started wanting to go to Alaska when a friend of mine showed me her pictures of glaciers and how that how gorgeous that looks and so I kind of had that in my head with this and so I named it glacier I don't think at all that I will be able to finish this by then I mean, I, a woman can have dreams, right? But nope, I don't think these dreams are realistic. So I did uh, purchase some other patterns, which I thought I show you for inspiration. I mean, you can see it in my activity, maybe on Ravelry, but I thought I show them to you because I found a few very nice treasures. Greenhouse, lovely. And I have something in mind with this, even though I don't think I have enough yardage. I'll show you its new stash, which would perfectly for this. But again, I would need Oh my goodness, 990 yards of a fingering yarn. Hmm. Nah, that won't work, but I have. You'll see. But it's a beautiful pattern. I have to. I was thinking I want to dye up a nice green. And this should be a green shawl, I think. And then I also pulled out this one. It's called Avalon. And the designer is Nadia Critin Lichen. I'm trying. <laughs> and the other designer is oh atelier alfalfa and learn and then another one by the beautiful hohi locatelli bark lines fairly new and this would be another option for that new skein that I initially thought of when I got this pattern. But I think I'm going to be able to use it for this shawl. I will show you in a second. I have also, this morning after I finished that little lacy corner, I had to, <laughs> I had to kind of do put some counter balance to that delicate knit by starting um, also or swatching I should say by swatching for a another fuzzy cardigan so especially if I give that one away so I'm gonna want another one so and um, so this is gonna be another one which I'm gonna make with either seven or even eight millimeter needles and the story is that I have purchased these two yarns in Germany at that Lana Grossa yarn store. Actually, I should show you this. Look at this. 
so pretty together and this purpley pinkish color picks up a shade that's in here so I got home and I was rearranging the yarns and I had also been gifted this from someone who didn't want it anymore a friend of mom's who gave me a whole sweaters quantity of this I don't know when this was in the stores it's a chain um, yarn store in Germany which is called Wollerudel this is a blend of viscose cotton and linen very nice yarn not really my color at all even though I love it sorry now the gnats are coming out hmm. so I had this in my hand and I was moving this around and I thought wow these two are also a perfect match they would totally go together so last night I while I was doing the lace after that already I swatched with I swatched doing this initial combo of these two but then also I swatched holding these two together and this is how they look like one I started all the balls and just used the bands so could just keep them and I'm gonna unravel them later so but I have a crazy stash so I also have a crazy amount of still of novelty yarns which I so I thought hmm. when I looked at this one I thought I don't even know if I like this so much after all because the the purplish pinkish color kind of overpowers the turquoise part in this one and so I pulled out the bin with all these crazy yarns and I found two yarns which I thought might be fun in a combo of one way or the other which is for one this one and ba bam crazy sparkles and this is from a company which is located here in New Mexico and they used to do these amazing November super duper yarn sale yard sale sale events where you would get something like this for one or two bucks and so I've probably had this for five years I'm thinking so I have a, a good quantity of this but then I also found this which is another Lana Grossa yarn and if you compare these two you can see that even the brown even the shades of brown get picked up in the fuzzy and of course this one would also go with this but it also very nicely goes with this so I have not swatched these two together yet. That came to me only later. I mean, this has always been in the stash, has been in the stash for so long. <sighs> but so I'm probably gonna knit a little thingy too. But what I did was this. So I asked my daughter this morning, I showed her all four and she picked this one and this one. Oh, I couldn't even do that. Wait a minute. 
I cannot even do that because this is fuzzy pink and this is fuzzy pink. I don't have enough for both. So, hmm, okay. She didn't like this one so much, but then she said, I said, don't you think this would look fabulous on me? And she said, mother, you know you're gonna do this one anyways, so why do you even ask me? It was very funny, mother-daughter moment. <laughs> I think I'm going to try this one also, the fuzzy with the, with the glitter, but it may be, maybe the glitter is not visible enough. I don't know. But if I use these two together, then I could do this one then after all. I would like this. I'm probably for this one. This is a seven millimeter needles. For this one, I would probably indeed go to eight millimeters. To It's kind of a little dense. So for this one, I went up right away to eight millimeters. So stay tuned. It's gonna stay exciting. I will have to make some decisions. And um, like I said, I wrote down kind of like a rough draft for this. Feel free to join me in making up your own fun top-down cardigan and if you have any questions feel free to ask. I'd love to help you with that. So what else? The last things I have to show you is making room. New stash and I have not brought everything because I got some yarns some more yarns gifted which some of which I showed you last episode but um, it's only the tip of that was only the tip of the iceberg I mean I, I did show wait a minute I did show you this one which oh actually I almost forgot I thought that would be don't you think this would be great? It's a Nora Gone pattern. I bought the booklet when she was in Albuquerque and I went there and she signed the book for me or the, I don't know what they're called, you know, like kind of like these thin things. And so before I went to Germany, I thought maybe I find something there that I want to use the pattern for because I really like this one. And I haven't yet checked the uh, how the gauge works and the yarn weight. Can you even see that? Sorry about the glare. That's an option, even though I keep saying this is not my color and then I'm considering still whatever. Stay tuned, you'll find out. What else? Oh yes, yarn, stash, stash. That's where I was. So when I went to the yarn store, I to the yarn store, which is in the town next to Mom's town. I knew I was gonna cave this time and get a yarn, which is a big thing in Germany right now. They call them bobbles. And it's a yarn that is composed of individual finer yarns and that are combined into by so so it's a combination of either three or four very fine yarns and um but the special thing about it is that then they change color i think what's done i have never knitted with any of these i think what they do is they replace one color with another color and that's how gradually throughout the yarn it you get i don't know from green to orange from blue to purple or from gray to yellow something like that so for me it was never very interesting because 
that's the kind of yarn I felt like that I grew up with because mom had those yarns from the place where she worked at. She always combined a few very fine yarns and knitted us um, garments from that when I was a kid. So that was an affordable way. I mean, she got that for free and that way she, she was just very frugal in that way. But for me, it meant that I was kind of like, I was done with that type of yarn. But by now, I'm, I'm seeing them from all the German podcasters. All, they're, they're using them. And you see these lovely shawls that where the color changes. Um, and th there are even quite a bit of patterns that um, make use of that gradient concept and that are designed to be used with those bubbles. So last year when the lady in the yarn so she showed me, oh by the way, look at this, this is what we got new. I'm like, no thank you. And this is why. And I held a speech, which she probably didn't appreciate, but whatever. We were just talking. But um, this year I went there and I thought, I'm going to reconsider. I'm going to look at what she has and I'm going to look at the colors and maybe I'm just going to give it a try. And I did indeed end up buying one of those balls of yarn. And this is how it comes. And I just also, I got to say, I just love the presentation. So you usually start from the inside out and the beginning of your skein comes out of this baggie and is tied to a little thing. I, I guess that's so you don't miss any of the of the threads that it's composed of. Let's see how many I have here. Four. Four. And that's kind of cute. So what I have picked, I went by color, but also I was thinking I'm gonna pick something which is kind of not really what I have or what I carry in my yarns. So it is a blend of merino and cotton which goes from a grayish purple to this bright green. And I think in between, oh yeah, there's a darker green and also segments where it's a little bit of a blue in there. I am so curious. It is a 50-50 super wash virgin wool and cotton and I have seen a kind of like a summer shawl which is called I think Persico or Persico by um, Fritzi Kreativ it's probably an only all German pattern I don't know I won't have any problems finding something for this I'm pretty sure so yes That is one very special ball of yarn. And then I I mentioned I've been to Venice. I went to Venice with my husband as a special trip for his birthday. And in Venice, I <laughs> did not promise. I really did not look up if there's a yarn store. But <laughs> we were walking and all of a sudden, lo and behold, there was a yarn store. So of course, I had to go in and check it out. And uh, the lady was very, very nice. I really liked her. And she was, the, they don't really do hand dyed yarns apparently, but they have yarns that are custom dyed for them. And that's what I ended up picking. This is a green which is not 
I, I think I do have, I do own one t-shirt that where I put it on and it always looks great on me. It's a great color for me, but uh, when I pick a green, I usually go for something more squeaky like this, but that's okay. We cannot have it all in the same colors. But so this is one of those custom colors that are dyed specifically for them. And let me look real quick what the name of the store is. Oh, Lella, Lella Bella, Lella Bella Venezia, Lella Bella Venezia dot com. And if you choose to look them up online, they, the lady told me that she ships internationally and it's just then you can, I mean, if, even if you don't want to order anything, it's just interesting to see how many colors they have of their yarns. I think they had two more bases that are custom dyed for them. But this one, I just had to, yeah, again, pick a lace yarn. Me, the person who never knits with lace yarn and never does lace projects. Yes, another lace yarn. And she showed me stuff where she held it together with other yarns. But then again, I'm thinking, nah, I'm not going to do that. This is, it has to be something very special. As a souvenir, 100% cashmere. It's kind of funny because <laughs> she was talking. She was uh, telling me that um, she had a Canadian knitter come by and buy two skeins. I don't remember what if she showed me the color. She may have shown me the color. But um, then, of course, I was wondering if Tracy of the Grocery Girls, if she went there. I thought she went to Europe and I'm, I'm not, I can't, just can't remember. I should just ask her. I'm going to ask her if she went to that yarn store. So I was just, I mean, we were walking when we were in Venice. I'm not surprised we found the yarn store because anything that was in that, in the center of Venice, we saw, we probably walked every little street. I was, <laughs> it was so funny because you know how I told you that I had hurt, hurt my foot so by the time my husband got got back to my mom's house, he had been traveling by himself. It was just like two days before we left together for Venice. And when I picked him up at the train station, I pretend, I mean, I had told him over the phone that I had hurt my foot so bad. And so when I was picking him up, I was limping like heavily. And I really scared him <laughs> because when we travel together, we always, we see a lot, we walk a lot. We really, really walk a lot, a lot. And so I know that must have scared him there for a moment, but I could, couldn't keep it up for long. <laughs> then I was demonstrated how I was up to normal, but it was kind of funny. Yeah. So Venice was really, really, it was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, as you can imagine, I will put some footage at the end. And um, also I wanted to thank you for all the sweet comments. I have not yet um, been caught up with everything that um, you commented after the last episode. So I will get to that hopefully in the next days but thank you for that and of course everything um that was addressed to mom i passed on and she she was very she's it's it's kind of like hard to grasp for her well it's hard to grasp for me too so <laughs> i'm not surprised but um yeah so thank you for all your comments thank you for uh, continuously stopping by and watching and i'm as always i am happy to do this happy to share my makings with you and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in about two weeks in the meantime enjoy the summer stay cool and make something that you enjoy and happy knitting bye <laughs>
Thank you.